Good Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hello, and thank you for watching. For the past few weeks, Central Square has played host to public property as that we have a tragedy of the commons issue. Saying happy holidays, team. Volunteer interactions where individuals are free to act so long as they don't initiate force. This morning, we gathered our man for Sergeant Tom Ball. Hello, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Johnny Ray. And I'm Allie Havens. Starting out local news tonight, we have followed the story of independent journalist Jason Talley in the court case the state has levied against him. Jason was arrested last fall for possessing a camera in the lobby of Superior Court. At the time of his arrest, there were judges' orders prohibiting the possession of a camera unless specific permission was obtained. This followed the incident between Judge Edward Burke and journalist Adamo Freeman in which Judge Burke lied to bailiffs, accusing Adamo of threatening him. The video of the incident proved otherwise. Today was the state's trial for Jason Talley. He was defended by former police officer Bradley Jardis. Apparently, prosecutor John Webb filed the wrong paperwork. Webb asked the judge to reduce the charges to Class B misdemeanors. The important point to remember is that in New Hampshire, a Class A misdemeanor grants the defendant the option of jury trial, whereas a Class B is relegated to the bench trial. Some say with corrupt judges like Burke still on the bench, one is better off with a jury. Bradley Jardis objected to the reduction of charges, as it would mean the trial would be sent back to district court. The judge decided to dismiss the charges while the state objected to the decision. Jason Talley will be joining us in the studio for an interview, but first here's a video of Bradley Jarvis and Jason from earlier today. Hi, I'm uh, Jason Talley and uh, with uh, Brad Jarvis here, my legal agent. Former legal agent. Right. So it's uh, April 16th on a Monday. I now have nothing hanging over my head, for me at least. It started in September of 2011 where um, I had a camera it was the size of my thumb. It was uh, clipped to my belt and uh, a couple of bailiffs uh, assaulted me and uh, put me in a cage for three days uh, because of that. And so um, since then I've had uh, bail restrictions and uh, today the state, uh, well, the court dropped the charges, right? Yes, yes, yeah. the court, uh, today the court ordered the dismissal of the two remaining charges because it was last week that the state uh, dropped the contempt charge. Um, but what's interesting about the state dropping the contempt charge is that when the uh, when the state prosecutes contempt of court, it effectively is doing that because the judiciary is its client. So I wonder what was said uh, behind closed doors, uh, of course, with attorney-client privilege between the uh, assistant county attorney John Webb and judicial branch the judicial branch officials who wanted uh, the contempt prosecution. Um, but. The charges were dismissed today uh, by the court over the objection of the state because the state um, didn't file a uh, required notice for a uh, Class A misdemeanor. And because the uh, required notice hasn't been filed, but um, uh, Tally asserted his right to a jury trial, there was no legal authority for the uh, court to hold a jury trial on a Class B misdemeanor. Um, the state asked that, uh, that you waive your right to a uh, uh, or, yeah, waive your right to a jury trial and have a bench trial. Um, but we said no to that because you have a right to a jury trial. So it left them in a position where they, they couldn't have a jury trial on a Class B misdemeanor for you. So right. yeah. If I did waive my right, it would have been a Class B misdemeanor, which would have meant no jail time at all. No jail time at all and uh, the potential for just a fine. But we still pushed for a, uh, a jury, and uh, that's when they had to drop everything. Yeah, I mean, well, the, uh, the assistant county attorney, he said you have three charges. Uh, excuse me, you have three options, but you actually had four, and the fourth one was just to dismiss it. We asked for its dismissal uh, with prejudice, which means double jeopardy attaches, so the case can't be tried again. Uh, the judge denied that, so technically the state could recharge you in district court, um, but I would suggest that that would be a very bad idea if they did. Well, um, well, thank you so much for taking the case, yeah. first of all. I'm curious, though, why did you decide to, uh, you spent a lot of time uh, a lot of money, you know, gasoline going back and forth. Uh, why do you decide to do it? Well, um, I, you know, I've said before that there is some activism uh, in the in the keen area that I don't like. Um, you know, some things that that generate bad public opinion. But what I can't stand even more is when uh, government officials um, play fast and loose with the constitutional rights that people are supposed to have. Um, having sworn three oaths to the New Hampshire Constitution myself and uh, three O's to the federal constitution. Um, 
you know, although I think some of the laws that exist in society today should be should be different, I still think that government officials who swear an oath to this document need to follow it. And what happened here was a demo Freeman of Keene got arrested for asking constitutionally protected questions, and as a result, your rights got taken away and you got prosecuted. And that's why I told the judge today, you can see it in the video, I told the judge that, you know, we maintain this is public corruption. Because you can't take away rights from people because one of your own tells a lie. Bailiff, Bailiff, this person is threatening me about a decision that I just made. I'm not threatening you. Um, but of course, none of this stuff is going to make it to the Supreme Court now because the case is over. Um, obviously, like I said, the state recharges him. Excuse me, it's not going to be very good for the state, but... So yeah, so it can't go to the Supreme Court now because of this uh, paperwork error. Yes, because of the paperwork error, um, your case is over, your freedom is restored, your bail conditions are gone, and uh, hopefully next time they'll be a little more careful uh, about taking people's constitutional rights away when <laughs> one of their own breaks the law. Well, haven't I already been punished uh, three days in, uh, in a cage and then uh, all this time you know, spending this, all the bail conditions? The lawsuit probably against the Sheriff's Department? Maybe a lawsuit in state court against the judicial branch, and I hope you talk to a lawyer who knows a lot about a lot more about that than I do, because uh, this type of stuff is unacceptable. And just you know, a little egg on their face for them losing this case, uh, to me, doesn't seem like enough punishment for all the stuff that you had to go through. So, um, I thought it was great that uh, everybody came out today. There were so many people from all over the Shire that, that came to support myself, you. Uh, just, the cameras, you know, transparency. Yeah, I mean, New Hampshire's own constitution, part one, article eight, says that magistrates, which are judges, and public, you know, public agents are uh, accountable to the people at all times, at all times. And today, what that means, you know, with the media today, that means cameras. And if you don't like being filmed, either don't go out in public or don't become a public official. Well, one last question, if you don't mind. I don't know if you guys have anything, but uh, what's next for you, Brad? Um, well, I'm probably uh, I'm probably going to be announcing soon that I'm running for sheriff um, somewhere in New Hampshire, probably northern New Hampshire. Um, you want to just make the announcement here, make it official? Well, I, 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 I officially need to talk to some more people who are going to be involved in the campaign, but um, I'm very interested in taking time work, to work with people when the government oversteps its authority. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people who uh, get wronged by the state and um, they have nowhere to go. And that's why this redress of grievances committee at the state house is so important because people are, you know, finally people are able to come out and, you know, give vo voice behind what happened to them. And, you know, I think the, um, the office of sheriff uh, would be perfect for me because I have a real interest in helping people when uh, the state abuses them, like with you. Like, to me, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Like, we swore an oath not to do these things. You can't do them. And um, I would like to be able to be in a position where I can help people when the state has overstepped its authority. So that's something that I'm 99% sure I'm going to be, uh, be working on. But. Joining us for an interview is Jason Talley. Hello, Jason. Welcome to the show. Hi, Allie. Thanks for having me on tonight. Jason. <clears throat> Uh, you had your charges dismissed due to a paperwork mistake? Yes. So we've had um, suspicions that uh, the Cheshire County court system is corrupt, but this shows that they might be incompetent as well. <laughs> Just inefficient with their paperwork? Well, actually, I don't think that uh, the uh, prosecutor, John Webb, wanted this to go before a jury. We were totally prepared. Um, I, I really appreciate all the work that Brad Jardis had put into this case, and <clears throat> we were looking forward to getting justice today. There was no way that I thought we could get uh, justice in front of a judge, so we thought we'd take it directly to the people. And then we show up uh, this morning ready for trial, and uh, the prosecutor is trying something out so that we wouldn't even have a jury trial. Fortunately, the judge um, saw through it and just dismissed the whole thing. So the, the, the uh, uh, John Webb indicated that it was going to be not a misdemeanor A, but a misdemeanor B, and you said, wait, I have a right to a jury? Well, uh, this all happened in September, and so uh, John Webb has been trying to, the prosecutor, has been uh, ditching charges left and right as we get closer and closer to trial, uh, trying to get me to take a plea deal. Uh, and so um, this last maneuver, if it was intentional, um, who knows, really, but uh, was to not 
he didn't file the right paperwork in time, uh, notifying me um, of something, and so it was just totally procedural. Uh -huh. Did you ever get your camera back? Uh, uh, no, the uh, that was stolen from me when I was assaulted by those uh, two bailiffs, and they still have my equipment that I should be doing using for my reporting job. Well, yeah, I mean, you paid; it was your property. You paid for it and everything. Right. And that's just floating around in the in the breeze. You don't have any indication of when you're going to be able to get that back, or if you'll be able to get it back. Uh, it's the government, so they're probably going to want me to fill out some paperwork first. Right, mm. right. Do you feel you bear a grievance against the state? Certainly. For what? Um, well, I don't think that uh, I think people should be able to bring cameras into government buildings. I mean that that may sound outrageous, but I think it's a good idea to keep government transparent. Otherwise, you are going to have corruption. I covered the Supreme Court when they were recently on tour at the uh, Moulton Borough Academy, and uh, one of the uh, justices said that the uh, judicial branch is the least understood branch of government. Well, it's no wonder if you're not going to allow a journalist to uh, go in there and, uh, and record on things. Fortunately, there has been some reform. Um, the, uh, what I was entrapped in uh, has been taken away. So people today walk through with cameras. One person walked in with a camera identical to mine and um, was allowed to keep it. Me, I brought uh, every camera that I own today, uh, laptops and everything. I was um, posting live uh, from the trial because Brad was doing all the work. Um, so they have eased up on that a bit and that's good to see. Yeah, but is it still uh, courtroom to courtroom, uh, what, the, what the rules are? Well, that's a good question because I've I've covered cases in uh, you know half a dozen different county courtrooms, and I've never had problems before I came to Cheshire County. As the video showed earlier, when Demo asked uh, Judge Burke some questions, that uh, cr that created a tightening of restrictions in just Cheshire County, and then I got caught up in that, unfortunately. Do you think this uh, prosecutor Webb is going to try to bring this back up? He could, um, but I thought it was great the number of people that showed up today. Um, he just didn't have a case. So right. unless he gets some good advice, I don't think he's going to. I'm, su I'm sure he has uh, other fish to fry that won't have as much support, unfortunately. Yeah. What are your plans now that you have this behind you? Uh, I'd like to do more traveling. This has uh, kind of kept me in the keen area for a while, but I'd like to cover more stories of uh, victims of government violence and. As I'm discovering, there's uh, unfortunately there's a lot of them here. Right, you live in Grafton. Well, I've been living in Keene for a while, but uh, the weather's getting nicer, and I want to do some um, um, more resilient community stuff. So I'll probably be spending time in Grafton, Keene, and elsewhere. Have you ever swum in the Atlantic Ocean here in New Hampshire? Uh, I have, yes. You have? Mm -hmm. It's um, it's I did once. It's it's very cold. Um, did you find it to be cold as well? I did actually a polar plunge, so yes, it was very cold. Oh, so you did it like in like winter or something? Like yeah, a polar Hard bear. Hardcore, yeah. T mm -hmm. bear, yeah. polar bear. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's insane. When I when I got in, it was in the middle of summer and it was still freezing. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it is year round. All They're right, Johnny Ray. <laughs> Thanks for being on our show, Tally, Thanks and for we love on. having you. Greenland, New Hampshire was the location of a shootout this past Thursday. The state attorney general's drug task force served a search warrant at the home of Colin Mutri. The incident turned violent and while details are still coming out, what we do know is that Greenland Police Chief Michael Maloney died in the conflict. Four other officers were also shot. As of Friday, two of the officers remain hospitalized in stable condition while the other two have been treated and released. Chief Maloney was just days away from retirement, and his, this whole incident is tragic in many ways. Cullen Mutri and a former girlfriend were found dead in the house. An autopsy report indicates that the girlfriend, Brittany Tibbetts, died from homicide, and Cullen Mutri died from a suicide. Police call it a murder-suicide. The war on drugs claims more life, this time most steroids. So tragic. A pension is often a reason many people seek out jobs as state employees. The guarantee of a retired income near the same as when you are working is an enticing promise. 
In order to help understand the pension issue, I want to take a moment to define the two types of retirement systems being discussed. Defined benefits or defined contribution. With defined benefits, contract speaks to the amount of money paid out during retirement. With defined contribution, the contract speaks to the amount of money added to a fund periodically, usually when the wage is paid out. In this way, the transaction is completed incrementally and instantly. There is no future guarantee or claim. This method seems best for each party as there is no future benefit that hinges on either the employee working for a certain term or the employer being in business forever. Currently, most of the employees of the state of New Hampshire and various municipalities receive a defined benefit pension. Given the current contracts with employees, the state pension fund is underfunded by about 60%. In other words, if the state had to pay out all the contracts now, it would come up short by roughly 40%. Our producer spoke with Seth Kahn, a SAPE rep from Merrimack's 6th District. Representative Kahn is on the committee that is looking to reform the pension system. Changes have already been made, but more are needed, he says, to get rid of the unfunded liabilities. The goal is to get all the new employees on a defined contribution system and to work to phase out defined benefits. New Hampshire isn't alone. Many states have underfunded pension systems. A 2011 study conducted by the Fiscal Times shows that New Hampshire is one of 11 states with less than 65% funding of pensions. That funding are collected our investments in various markets with the idea that the returns would help bolster the whole pension system. A decade ago, most pension systems were fully funded, but with the downturn in the economy, some of the investments have lost money. Coupled out with the politicians making pension promises to get elected, and you have a recipe for disaster. This brings us to our economic segment. The past decade has been one of booms and busts. The stock market rallies and then falls, and the cycle repeats. At the core of this issue is the economic system in place. The current paradigm is championed by John Maynard Keynes, a 20th century British economist who advocated strong market intervention through the use of inflation and government spending. The opposing paradigm is brought forth by F.A. Hayek and calls for reduced government spending and size as well as saving rather than credit. This next awesome video helps to illustrate the different philosophies. Take a look. I'm watching you. Lord, Lord Keynes, wow, it's, it, it, it's, it's such an honor. Indeed, sir. Please, just go, just go right on through. Whoa, whoa. No. Identification, please. Hayek. Hayek, like um, high explosives. High, high explosives. Yeah. We have a 1066 HQ. I repeat, we have a 1066. Copy that, Mike. Proceed. What is a 1066? That was just an example of how to pronounce it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members of the committee. We are here today to consider the impact of government spending on our economy. We're fortunate to have two world-renowned economists to offer their testimony on the matter. Oh, I see you took a detour down the road to serfdom. Talk about the end of laissez-faire. Sheesh. <laughs> well, shake it off, Freddy. I'm not pulling any punches in there. I'm ready. Are you? Prepare for the return of the master. <laughs> John Maynard Keynes, F.A. Hayek, round two, round 2.0. Same economists, same beliefs, new microphones, new mustaches. Here we are, peace out, great recession, thanks to me, as you see, we're not in a depression. Recovery, destiny, if you follow my lesson, Lord Keynes, here I come, line up for the procession. We brought out the shovels and we're still in a ditch and still digging. Don't you think it's time for a switch from that hair of the dog? Friend, the party is over. The long run is here. It's time to get sober. Are you kidding? My cure works perfectly fine. Have a look, the Great Recession ended back in 09. I deserve credit. Things would have been worse. All the estimates.
it's proven. I'll quote chapter and verse. Econometricians, they're ever so pious. Are they doing real science or confirming their bias? Their Keynesian models are tidy and neat, but that top-down approach is a fatal conceit. Oh. Which way should we choose? Walk bottom up or more top down? The fight continues. Gains and high is second round. It's time to win. Or from the top or from the ground. Let's listen to the we could have done better had we only spent more Too bad that only happens when there's a world war You can carp all you want about stats and regression Do you deny World War II cut short the depression? Wow, one data point and you're jumping for joy The last time I checked, wars only destroyed There was no multiplier, consumption just shrank As we used scarce resources for every new tank Pretty perverse to call that prosperity Ration meat, ration butter, a life of austerity when that war spending ended, your friends cried disaster. Yet the economy thrived and grew faster. You too only see what you want to see. The spending on war clearly goose GDP. Unemployment was over, almost down to zero. That's why I'm the master. That's why I'm the hero. Creating employment's a straightforward craft. When the nation's at war and there's a draft. If every worker was staffed in the army and fleet, we'd have full employment and nothing to eat. Should we choose Off bottom up or more top down The fight continues Gains and high it's second round It's time to win Or from the top or from the crowd Let's listen to the great sections And high it going down Jobs are a means, not the ends in themselves People work to live better, to put food on the shelves Real growth means production of what people demand That's entrepreneurship, not your central plan My solution is simple, and easy to handle It's spending that matters, why is that such a scandal? Money sloshes through the pipes and the sluices Revitalizing the economy's juices It's just like an engine that's stalled and gone dark To bring it to life, we need a quick spark Spending's the lifeblood that gets the flow going Wasted as cronies get fatter. The economy's not a car, there's no engine to stall. No expert can fix it, there's no it at all. The economy's us, we don't need a mechanic. Put away the wrenches, the economy's organic. Which way should we choose? Off bottom up for more top down. The fight continues. Gains and high, it's second round. It's time to win. Or from the top or from the Listen to the big sections and how you throw it So down. what would you do to help those unemployed? This is the question you seem to avoid. When we're in a mess, would you have us just wait? Doing nothing until markets equilibrate? I don't want to do nothing. There's plenty to do. The question I ponder is who plans for whom? Do I plan for myself or leave it to you? I want plans by the many, not by the few. Let's not repeat what created our troubles. I want real growth, not a series of bubbles. Stop bailing out losers. Let's prices work. If we don't try to steer them, they won't go berserk. Come on, are you kidding? Don't Wall Street gyrations challenge a worldview of self-regulation? Even you must admit that the lesson we've learned is more oversights needed or else we'll get burned. Oversight? The government's long been in bed with those Wall Street execs and the firms that they bled. Capitalism's about profit and loss. You bail at the losers, there's no end to the cost. The lesson I've learned, it's how little we know. The world is complex, not some circular flow. The economy's not a classic and master in college. To think otherwise is the pretense of knowledge. Which way should we choose? And you're off to the races I look at the world on a case-by-case -case basis When people are suffering, I roll up my sleeves And do what I can to cure our 
disease. The future's uncertain, our outlooks are frail. That's why free markets are so prone to fail. In a volatile world, we need more discretion. So state intervention can counter depression. People aren't chess men, you move on a board at your whim. Their dreams and desires ignored. With political incentives, discretion's a joke. Those dials are twisting, just mirrors and smoke. We need stable rules and real market prices. So prosperity emerges and cuts short the crisis. Give us a chance so we can discover the most valuable ways to serve one another. <laughs> Which way should we choose? Walk bottom up for more top down. The fight continues. Gains and high excitement bound. It's time to win. Walk from the top or from the ground. Let's listen to the great sections and high Going down. Which way should we choose? More bottom up or more top down? The fight continues. Kings and high second bound. It's time to win. Or from the top or from the ground. Let's listen to the great sights. Kings and high it going down. Welcome back. So that was the second of uh, Econ Stories. They are the ones that put out that video. Right. They had a previous video that was also really good, and that was the second one. And they're, after the first one, I think a bunch of people really liked where they're going with that and donated. And so then this one was a higher production value. But I really I like that video because a lot of people don't know that Keynes, um, John Maynard Keynes, is the one that the economic system we are currently living under is modeled from. He's the theorist behind that. And a lot of people don't even know his name. They think it's like Adam Smith or something. Yeah, that's what um, Keynesianism is what I learned in the community college economics class I took. Um, but uh, but did they like expose other theories, or are they just like this is economics? It's Kane well, yeah, it's Keynesian, but he's the one that did they like make it suggested as if Keynes pioneered economics or something? Well, kind of, yeah. It was d d it was described as that the Keynesianism is how the world works, hmm. and uh, I mean, it, like I say, it was Ashel Buncombe Community Technical College, um, so so maybe it wasn't. Um, um, the most prestigious economics course. They weren't delving uh, deep into the philosophical realm necessarily. Yeah, there <laughs> weren't a lot of competing theories described. But um, uh, Econ Stories is from Russ Roberts, who does uh, from the Library of Economics and Liberty and George Mason University. He's got a podcast called Econ Talk. It's one of my favorites. I listen to it a lot. But um, but uh, I usually have to listen to them a couple of times to really get the full benefit of them. Yeah, sometimes economics is complicated. But uh, I'd like to say that Freaking TV works with Freaking.com as a web presen presence for a TV show and a source for stories and news. Otherwise, Freaking TV is an independent TV show and does not necessarily support nor advocate all the content on the website. You can contact us by sending an email to tv at freekeen.com. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Allie Havens. And I'm Johnny Ray, wishing you and yours only the best.